This is Dr. Ankur Shah, and this will be a talk on polymyalgia rheumatica. In this talk, we will give a brief overview of polymyalgia rheumatica, otherwise known as PMR. In particular, we will cover some of the clinical features of PMR and touch on some of what's known about the pathophysiology of this disorder. Finally, we will talk about therapeutics that are out there and how we use them to help our patients. Here is a brief outline of this talk. We'll start with a patient presentation, discuss the definition, epidemiology, diagnosis, pathophysiology, as well as treatment and prognosis, as listed here. First, let's start with the case. A 68-year-old female presents to your clinic complaining of muscle aches and weakness in her shoulders, neck, and upper thighs for the past four weeks. In addition, she tells you that she has had about a six-pound weight loss over the past three months. When you examine her, she has diffuse pain and tenderness over her shoulders and hips. There is no obvious joint swelling or arthritis. Lab tests are sent which reveal an elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate, or ESR, of 89. Based on the history, physical exam, and lab tests, you give the patient a preliminary diagnosis of polymyalgia rheumatica. So what is PMR? As best we can tell, it is an inflammatory disease that primarily affects the musculature, as well as the surrounding structures of the shoulder and pelvis girdles. PMR is closely related to another disease, giant cell arteritis, which is a vasculitis of the large vessels of the body. Giant cell arteritis and PMR may actually represent different clinical spectrums of a single disease process. Approximately 40 to 50 percent of patients with giant cell arteritis also have PMR. In addition, about 10 to 15 percent of patients diagnosed with PMR will ultimately develop GCA. Giant cell arteritis will be discussed in a separate lecture in 10 minutes. Let's talk about the epidemiology of PMR. The disease is found almost exclusively in patients over 50 years old, with the average age of diagnosis being 70 years old. The prevalence of disease is approximately 700 per 100,000 persons over 50 years old. The prevalence is increased in patients of Northern European heritage. The incidence, or the number of new cases per year, is between 5 and 100 per 100,000 people per year. Women tend to be affected more than men at a ratio of 2 to 3 to 1. The pathology of PMR is somewhat complex, and there is likely an interplay between environmental and genetic factors. A higher rate of the human leukocyte antigen, or HLA gene, HLA-DR4 has been observed, which may explain some of the genetic predisposition. At the cellular level, patients display systemic macrophage and T-cell activation with cytokine production. The production of cytokines, in particular interleukin-6, appears to closely correlate with the severity and expression of systemic symptoms. The involvement of IL-6 is also suggested by the response to glucocorticoid therapy. The administration of glucocorticoids is associated with both a decrease in serum levels of IL-6 and a rapid improvement in symptoms. At the tissue level, the cellular and cytokine activation leads to inflammation of the joint synovium and bursa. How do we diagnose PMR? For the most part, diagnosis is based on the clinical features with which the patient presents. Affected individuals typically describe the subacute onset of pain mainly in the shoulders as well as the hip girdle and neck, with the latter seen often in older patients. Symptoms are usually symmetric and often accompanied by generalized morning stiffness. Pain can be accompanied by inflammation of the bursal sac around joints or bursitis as well as inflammation of the peripheral joints. Additionally, on exam there is tenderness with decreased range of motion of the proximal shoulder and or hip. Many patients experience subjective weakness, although strength testing on physical exam is often normal. In addition to the clinical findings, other diagnostic tests may be useful in confirming the diagnosis of PMR. Most patients will have an elevated ESR, usually over 50 millimeters per hour, but may be higher than 100. C-reactive protein, another general marker of inflammation, is also elevated. In fact, up to 10% of patients may have a normal ESR, and CRP may be a more sensitive test. Other tests for rheumatologic conditions such as the ANA and rheumatoid factor are normal. 
Imaging studies are beginning to be utilized to aid in diagnosis, although not routinely used in practice. Subacromial bursitis may be seen on MRI or ultrasound and may help in looking at response to treatment. What other diagnoses should be considered when patients present with symptoms consistent with PMR? This is a short list, but one should consider elderly onset inflammatory joint disease, such as rheumatoid arthritis or spondyloarthropathy, generalized non-autoimmune bursitis, crystal arthropathies such as gout or CPPD, also known as pseudogout, fibromyalgia, and hypothyroidism. In terms of treatment, corticosteroids are the treatment of choice and are usually extremely effective. Patients generally have significant relief within one to three days, and many will report complete resolution of symptoms. We generally start with 15 milligrams of prednisone per day and taper down slowly over the course of six to nine months. Once the patient has tapered down to five milligrams, we then taper the prednisone by only one milligram a month as tolerated. With a long course of corticosteroids, one must be cognizant of side effects such as elevated blood sugar and bone density loss, particularly in the elderly population. In addition to steroids, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, may provide supplementary relief. Again, one must be mindful of effects on kidney dysfunction in this population. The prognosis for PMR is generally quite good. With identification and appropriate treatment, most cases resolve completely. Some patients can even resolve spontaneously. Others may have a chronic relapsing course and may need repeat treatment or chronic low-dose steroids for many years. As discussed earlier, some patients may develop the more serious giant cell arteritis, which may require higher prednisone dosages and have a risk for more severe complications. Still others may evolve into a symmetrical polyarthritis that appears like and is often treated similarly to rheumatoid arthritis. In summary, PMR is an inflammatory disease involving activation of the macrophages and T-cells, as well as cytokine production leading to inflammation primarily of the proximal bursa and joints of the arms and legs. The disease primarily affects those over 60 years old, along with clinical symptoms, elevated inflammatory markers such as the ESR and CRP, are a clue to diagnosis. The disease is very responsive to treatment with glucocorticoids, which often require a very slow taper over months. Overall, the prognosis of PMR is quite good. However, the physician must be aware of the association with giant cell arteritis, which may have more severe complications. Here are some key references to learn more about polymyalgia rheumatica.